This video is going to be about the specific plot, a bar chart. Bar charts are generally used for one categorical variable, and you got to remember that in R, categorical variables are also called factors. The plot uh, bar chart is equivalent to a table of counts of each level. Okay, so let's get just a mini example going here before we dive into R and see how to make bar charts. For whatever reason, I'm focusing on tuna again. Maybe I need to eat some sushi. I don't know what's going on. So suppose we have a data frame of tuna where we've got two variables, fish ID and ocean. And fish ID just records a unique identification for each fish. I'm not very creative. So I'm just gonna say we've got 10 tuna in our data set. An ocean is going to be our factor, our categorical variable, that records which ocean each tuna came from. So I don't know, we'll say A for Atlantic, and P for Pacific, and I don't know, P for Pacific, and S for Southern, and A for Atlantic, and P for Pacific, and I don't know, um, P for Pacific, because it doesn't actually matter here. Okay, so in this case, we've got our factor variable, ocean, with levels A, P, and S. So the word level is each of the values your factor variable can take on. So the plural levels our factor variable, ocean, can take on are A, P, and S for Atlantic, Pacific, and Southern. So the levels are the values your categorical variable can take on. So each new categorical variable is going to have different levels. It's just the values a categorical or factor variable can take on. So if we were going to look at a table, a table might just have A, P, and S, and it would just say, look, there's one, two fish from the Atlantic, one, two, three, four from the Pacific, and one from the Southern Ocean, at least from what we can see. There's maybe more fish in there, but you know, that's good enough for us. So if we were to make this table into a plot, that would be a bar chart. Now let's see if I can draw some good bar chart here. So a bar chart would put the categorical variable, the factor on the x-axis, and it would give ticks for each of the levels of the categorical variable. And on the y-axis, we would get counts. So let's see, for fish from the Atlantic, we'd have two. For tuna from the Pacific, we'd go all the way up to four. And for tuna from the Southern Ocean, we'd have one. This is our first hand-drawn example of a bar chart. Now, theoretically, you're going to have a bunch of data uh, data sets with many more than, let's see, I only gave you seven observations in that. You're going to have a data set with many more than seven observations, and you're not going to want to have to draw out your bar chart by hand. So we're going to turn to R and figure out how to use the library ggplot2 to make bar charts for us. So I'm going to start working in the console here because this is where we're going to be practicing code. Anytime you're trying to develop code before you have like a final line of code that you think is successfully written, I'd encourage you to develop the code in the console. And then once you're done, go up into the source. That's where your R Markdown course notes will be. And once you have your one line of code that works, then you can put it in your R Markdown document. But I think you'll see as time progresses in this class that it takes a little bit to develop even just a single line of code. And so once you get it, you want to save it into your course notes. But before you have it perfect, eh, just mess around in the console. So we're going to use the library ggplot2. We got to remember, anytime we want to use the library ggplot2, we need to go to the library, check out the package named ggplot2 and say, hey, library, I'd like to use the resources contained in the package ggplot2. If you haven't installed it already, please click Install and install the package 
tidyverse, T-I-D-Y-V-E-R-S-E. To give our first example of a bar chart, whoops, <laughs> in R, we're going to use the library tooth growth. So I'm going to put a question mark before the data set name just to remind you that you can pull up the help file for it. And here we go. We got a data frame with 60 observations. Those are rows and three variables, one of which is a factor appropriate for a bar chart. So here's how the code is going to go. Let's make sure we can all see it. I'll zoom in a little bit for making a bar chart. You're going to use the function ggplot. I know this is a little confusing that the library is named ggplot2, but within that library, within that package, there's a function named ggplot. So you go ggplot, parentheses, then you type the name of the data frame that contains the data you want to make a plot with. Next up after a comma is AES, that stands for aesthetic. You should think about how that this plot is going to put variables on the X or Y axis. We are only going to put the, let's see, I suggested the variable sup because that's our factor variable, sup on the X axis. So you can just type out sup like that. After the closing right parenthesis to the function ggplot, we will add the geometry of a bar chart. So plus geom underscore bar, open close parentheses, and nothing else within that function geom bar. And here is our first, it turns out it's not a super interesting plot, but here is our first bar chart in R. You can see the factor variable on the x-axis, the levels as ticks along the x-axis, and count for however many observations you had within each level. So it turns out in this experiment for tooth growth, we had 60 observations, and they were equally distributed into both treatments. I'm trying to use all our new fancy language here, so please do go back to your course notes and review that language if you don't understand observations or treatments. And here's some more. This is an experiment where the researcher controlled the number of observations in each treatment. And it is good practice in general to try to equally divide the observations between all of your treatments. Here, because we had two treatments, and 60 observations, they correctly put 30 into each treatment here, each level, the same idea going on. Okay, let's see if we can use a different data set that might be a little bit more interesting. I'm going to suggest the data set chick weight. And the data set chick weight, it's about chicken's weight, has a variable that describes what diet they got. Diet is a factor and it just gave the different diets the chickens received numbers, one through four. Obviously, those numbers aren't meaningful as numeric values. They're just kind of labels uh, given to the different diets that the chickens received. So if you want to challenge, see if you can copy that general formula that I just highlighted and paste it right here. I recommend you pause the video and try it yourself. When you return, I will show you a second example of the function ggplot, which is contained in the library ggplot2. The first argument to the function ggplot is the data frame you would like to plot, the data frame that contains the data that you would like to plot, in this case, chick weight. Then you specify the aesthetic you are interested in. This is how you specify which variables go on which axes, and it always goes x first and then y. So in this case, we are going to use the variable diet as it's named within the data set. And then plus, and we want the geometry of a bar chart. So here's a little bit more interesting example. We saw there was more than 200 chickens given diet number one. There was, I don't know, I'm going to guess here, 120 chickens that were given diets two and three. 
and I don't know, something a little bit less than 120 that, of chickens that were given diet four. So just to show you that this is indeed the equivalent of a table, let me show you some as a last thing for this video how you could replicate this plot in a table. We'll use the function table. Then we'll reference the data frame chick weight. And we know the data frame chick weight has a variable named diet. The way you access that variable named diet within the data frame chick weight is by putting a dollar sign after the data frame. So we'll go chick weight, dollar sign, and then look, here's all the variables in that data frame that popped up. So you can click diet, you could type diet out however you want to do it. To the function named table, you pass the argument that is the single variable named diet contained within, whoops, that dollar sign is to be read as something like contained within the data frame chick weight. And indeed, the first level, number one, had 220 chickens in it. The second and third diets, the levels, two and three had 120, and the fourth had 118. So here is two really good examples for how you can create some fun tables or plots. I much prefer the plot myself, and I'm going to encourage us to use plots as often as possible over tables. Hence, plots were emphasized in this video.